1966, Hammer Films decided that they would try and milk the sets they had made for one million years BC. So, using the remnants of those sets, and many of the same actors and actresses, Hammer Films set about making prehistoric women. Let's take a look at what this produced. The opening credits are done to a lot of wildlife footage. And actually the music isn't too bad, nor is the footage itself, but the thing that grinds my gears is the damn widescreen presentation. I mean seriously, are you sure you just cut enough off the top and the bottom there because I can actually still just barely see the picture? For goodness sake, if I wanted to watch a film like this, I'd watch it through my letterbox. How would you like it if I just did the rest of my review like this? Uh, okay, not off to the best start, but you know what, I can make do with this. Um, you know, Michael Latimer graduated from RADA, so let's see what he can do. You damn fool, I can wait! That's not some clay animal the fairground is shooting at! Well, with his so far not-so-evident acting credentials, Michael Latimer plays David Merchant, who is quickly identified as a noble and earnest man who's going to go out of his way to put this animal down to minimize its suffering. The only problem is, in doing so, he is going to trespass upon sacred ground. What is it? It is the sign of the sacred white rhino. <laughs> the sign of the sacred white rhino, that's a good one. Wait, Wana, you would enter their lands? Well, we haven't gone this far to be turned back by a primitive tree carving. But here, the devils of darkness are all about us. The devils of what? The spirits of the past that protect the holy shrine from the desecration of unworthy eyes. Oh my god, you were being serious. Well, um... <laughs> awkward, let's just press on. For trespassing on the land of the sacred right rhino, David Merchant is seized by a tribe where he must now face the music, and I mean literally face the music, as he watches the tribe perform a ridiculous dance. Even though that was about as intimidating as Mr. Scottish Pig, David Merchant is scared, as the leader of the tribe now explains why he must die. In this we displeased our gods, who placed us in spiritual bondage until the white rhinoceros itself reappears. Or until the false idol shatters. Until such time as either of these signs from the gods appears, all who enter the sacred land must die. Just as the viewer wonders if this film can get any more ridiculous, lightning flashes and freezes time, as well as opening up a time portal into a lost, distant land. David enters this land and wanders around, where he's ambushed by Adina Ronay's character, who he proceeds to have an erotic wrestle with. <laughs> As he is seized by a herd of black-haired women, David offers this as an explanation for what he was doing. I was trying to help her. Not surprisingly, he is thrown into captivity, where he reunites with Adina Ronay's character, which paves the way for exchanges like this. No one must accept you to fate, Saria. Are there no men here to help you? But you said you had come to help us. But your men, where are they? They are no longer men. <laughs> Take her. And that right there, laughing, was Martin Beswick's character. Martin Beswick recycled property from one million years BC, who played the rival of Rakhal Welsh also plays the evil vixen in this film, and like everything else, I am struggling to take her seriously. 
after that. It is revealed that in this world, the black-haired women rule over the blonde-haired women, with Martin Beswick's character being on the throne as the queen. She gets her slave women to dance for her, and look at this, she doesn't even say thank you to this woman who brings her food. What a bitch. It becomes apparent at this point why people probably went to see this movie. It wasn't for the plot or story, it was for the women dancing around in loincloth. Oh, so that's why the story makes no sense. The plot and story aren't important, they're just there as a sort of smokescreen, so when a girlfriend asks her boyfriend what the film was about they went to see, they have something to say other than what they really went to see. Then again, if my girlfriend was to ask me what the film I saw about the other night was, and I was to explain to her about the prophecy of the white rhinoceros, I think that would create a whole bunch of problems on itself. But back to this evil queen's mistreating of her slaves. Oh, look at that again! Ugh, when someone offers you some food and you decline, it should be more like, no thank you, WHERE ARE YOUR MANNERS?! Well, after this disgusting act of having the food of the blonde woman poured on the floor, this one woman has finally had enough and is going to stand up to this no, evil queen. I will tear the heart from her! Now is not the time! Look at her! She eats upon a throne whilst we grovel in the dust! We are not beasts of the field! We are women equal to her! You are wrong. You are my slaves. For her insolence, this brave heroine is now killed to some overzealous reactions. Exemplifying true nobility, David Merchant refuses the evil queen as she comes on to him. You refuse me? What else can you expect? Your heartless cruelty is sickening. You'd have me otherwise. What makes you so cruel? Cruelty has made me cruel. I was once their slave. Before the devils came, we dark ones were in bondage to the fair ones. You would have pitied me then, a meek, cringing creature. You would have pitied me, but you would not have wanted me. And the only thing more delirious than the story in this film was that dialogue right there. And as the scene progresses, we get what appears to be footage catering to those people in the dominatrix scene. The others you will become my slave. Ugh. Well, as the film keeps going, after some time, Adina Renee's character comes up with a cunning plan to use the Queen's infatuation towards David Merchant against her. Yes, she convinces him to infiltrate her, essentially, to deceive her into thinking that he wants to be with her. It's a smooth plan, everything is running great until. No! I released you from your promise! What an idiot! Well, after this spilling of the beans, what ensues is unintentional hilarity at its finest, and I won't interrupt, I'll just let this play. He has fulfilled your desires only because I made him promise that he would. Is this true? She is confused. She doesn't know what she's saying. He did it for all our sakes. Take him to the cavern and never let him see daylight again. Never, never, never. Bring her. So with that plan foiled, they must, the men must fall back on a new plan. Basically, breaking out of their chains and having a good old-fashioned fight. Oh yes, there is man-on-woman violence. As it progresses, the fight choreography 
just forget about it. Ugh, what is this? Why are 60s films so hell-bent on doing this? It completely restricts your movement. It makes it much harder to deliver a crushing blow. Considering how ferociously Beswick screamed, never, this catfight between our two lady stars of the film is very disappointing. After the dark head women and the dark forces are vanquished in battle, it is now time for the big star of the film to come in. He is our god. He will not harm us. <laughs> So after that, it's a really cheesy love moment between our two stars of the film, and the false prophet statue of that white rhino shatters to the delight of this great man. The legend of the white rhinoceros is fulfilled! Our souls are no longer in bondage! And David Merchant returns back to camp for an ending which makes absolutely no sense. 